Shalom, everyone. So tab page 30 mentions a pasuk, which is regular, and we know it by heart. And I would like to check this pasuk and find what the Gemara want us to understand from that pasuk. So let, let's read the, 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 the passage, the, the part of the Gemara that mentions that pasuk. Um, and let me go to the English. Okay. So that's what the Gemara says. Tanur Rabbanan, the sages taught in a Beraita by Rabbi Yossi from the Galilee. And Rabbi Yossi taught at the time that the Jewish people ascended from the sea, they resolved to, si they resolved to sing a song of gratitude to God. And how did they recite this song? If a baby was lying on his mother's lap or an infant was nursing from his mother's breasts, once they saw the divine presence, the baby straightened his neck and the infant dropped the breast from his mouth and they recited, this is my God and I will glorify him. As it is stated, out of the mouth of, the, of babies and sucklings, you have founded strength. So a few things we have to understand here. One, what is the story with the baby and the infant, you know, dropping everything um, and looking at the divine, the divine presence, the Shekhinah, and saying, this is my God, Ze Eli Van Veu. And why does the Gemara combine this Pasuk or understand this Pasuk from the, from the other Pasuk from Psalms? Um, out of the mouth of baby and sucklings, you have found its strength. And let's start with the pasuk about the pasuk of Kriat Yam Suk, of Shirat Yam, that this Gemara is quoting for us. So the pasuk is Ozivizim Ratia, Vaili Li Shua, Ze Elive and Vehu, Elohe Aviva Romemenhu. And God is my strength and might. He is become my deliverance. This is my God, and I will uh, enshrine him, the God of my fathers, and I will exalt him. And the Gemara wants to understand, and the Midrash wants to understand, and we'll see also in the in the commentators, um, what does that mean, this is my God? Because it sounds, when you say, this is my God, like you're pointing on, on something. And the Midrash actually says that the children, the young children, whom their parents took outside of the city, by the by the uh, by the river by the by the sea um and left them there so the egyptians won't find them and kill them these little children were raised by angels and they often saw the shechina so the midrash and also that's what our gemara is saying when the when in kriat yamsuf when when shechina was there the children the young children the the the, the babies recognized the God from, from, from before. That's why they're like pointing at the God and saying, yes, this is, this is the God. This is uh, my God and I will uh, enshrine him. I will praise him. I will exalt him. So this is the Pasuk. And what the Midrash and other commentators are doing with it, and I'm, I'm going to take one path because obviously there are many, many. Um, and I want to I want to start understanding that wor these words through a midrash in Bereshit Raba, and the midrash in Bereshit Raba is um, is looking at the pasuk from Bereshit, uh, from the book of Bereshit about Abraham after the war with a with a, with, a, with the great kings when he has the little discussion with Melech Sdom, and Melech Sdom wants to offer him um, um, a reward. Or, or offerings, and Avram refused, refused, and he, and Avram said the following. But Abraham said to the king of Sodom, "I swear to God, God Most High, Creator of heaven and earth." I just want to show you the Hebrew because the Hebrew will be, will be relevant for the midrash. Avram is telling Melech Sodom, "Harimoti yadi el Hashem el Elyon." Okay? Um, <clears throat> the the English doesn't um doesn't add or doesn't have the sensitivity of the of every word here because it just says you know i swear to god but really the way that avraham is saying he swear to god is by raising his hand harimoti yadi i raised my hand to god this is a sign of shvua 
but the raising of the hand is important. And also the verb that the Pasuk uses, Harimoti. And then goes the Midrash and says, Ze Eli ve'anvehu Elohei avi ve'aromemenhu. And Rabbi Burechia, and Rabbi Chelbo, and Rabbi Ami, in the name of Rabbi Elazar, he's saying, Moshe used in Shirat Ayam, Moshe used the language of his father. Which father? Avraham. As Avraham said, Harimoti yadi, I raised my hands. This is the language that Moshe used saying, Elohei avi ve'aromemenhu. In other words, the word Aromemen, who in Shirat Ayam said by Moshe and the people, sounds to Chazal like the word Harimoti. Harimoti and Aromemen, who. How does one praise God? One praise God using, what, using the example that the forefathers and the foremother used. What did Aram do when he wanted to praise God? He raised his hand, Aromemen, who. Harimoti, I raised my hand to God. This is how Moshe used uh, the verb that Moshe used to praise God. The other midrash is looking at a different word. Is this midrash uh, looked at the word aromemenhu, meaning I praised God, I swear to God, I raised my hands. The midrash in in uh, in chapters uh, uh, in in Samech Gimel of of Bereshit Rabbah is looking at a different pasuk in Sefer Bereshit, the one concerning a sav. Telling Yaakov, I don't mind selling you my my bechora. I'm I'm going to die anyway. And Reish Lakish is saying, Esav here really is starts to swear and to curse, and he's saying, and 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 Reish Lakish is saying, Esav doesn't use the word why should I? Why should I need? Why do I need this bracha? This bechora? But rather he says, Lama zeli. Why is this for me? And Rish Lakish understands from this, Melamed shekafar bezeli. He went against God. He went against, this is my God. He went against, this is Eli. In other words, Rish Lakish is emphasizing on the, is looking at the word ze Eli. If we looked at the Aromemen who before, now we're looking at the Ze'eli, what does that mean? This is my God. And Rish Lakish understand from that, that when, when people say, this is my God, this is a recognition of God. But Esav said, I am at the point of death. So of what use is this birthright to me? And he didn't say, and in, and in the English again, it doesn't carry the, the sensitivity of the Hebrew because Rish Lakish is saying, Esav is saying, Lama zeli. I don't want ze, I don't want God. The, 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 the birthright is, is, is about believing in the right order that God created in the world. I don't want this birth order and I don't want this God. <clears throat> and now, and now, okay, so we understand that Zeli van Veu is recognizing God, is praising God. It's specifically from the children. And why is it specifically from the kids, the babies, actually, the infants? Uh, and that's what that's the last part of the Gemara that we saw, that it also quotes the Pasuk from Tehillim, from the mouth of infants and the suck and sucklings, you have found in strength on account of your foes to put an end to enemy and avenger. And we will focus on the first part of the Pasuk, and trying to understand first what does that mean, what does that mean? And second, how does that connect to that the babies and the infants, you know, left their mother's breast, raised their neck, and looked up and recognized God? And we're using the help of the Radak, Rabbi David Kimchi. A, Spani uh, 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 a French, a Jewish French uh, uh, parashan uh, from the 13th century. And the Radak is saying the following. Why is it that it's from the mouth of the babies and the uh, of the infants and, and, and the sucklings? Especially is, is, look, is going to look at the, at the word yonkim and the one who suckled from their mother's breast. What, what's, what's coming from their mouth? 
And the Radak is saying, out of the mouth of babies <clears throat> and sucklings, thus has laid the foundation of strength. Something about the foundation, you said it to Oz, something about the foundation is coming from infants. The first of the distinguishing marks in man after he's coming into the air of the world is the power of sap, or it's the power to sap. It is, it is needful that men should confess the creator and recognize his might and power on account of his work that are visible in heaven and in earth. In other words, the Radak is saying, the first minute that we are born, we are we have we have this instinct of sucking ready for us, and we can start and our mothers can start nursing us. They have enough milk that we need, and we know we know that we have that instinct to suck from 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 the mother's breast. And Radak is saying, don't don't stop being amazed from that, because this is the amazement that God put in the word in the beginning, in the foundation. The first minute we're out in the air, we already have everything fixed for us. It is for this reason that he says, out of the mouth of babies and suckling, thus has laid the foundation of strength, that men may be able to see that all, he, that all is within the design of a designer and not as the enemies of the Lord say that everything happens by nature and changes and, ch and chance, the enemies say everything happens by nature and chance without the direction of a director and the design of the designer. And we believe the opposite. And it happens from the first minute we breathe in this world. So why is the, the why is the Midrash and the Gemara adds the Pior Alim Kim Yisadeta Oz to Zelivan Veu? He wants to hint us that the first ones in Kriat Yam Suf, according to Moshe in Shirat Yam, they were the first one to recognize God because little babies and infants are the first one to, under, to recognize or they are the proof that everything is set in this world. We have everything within this world, a design to help us be and grow. But there's more. And this time we're focusing on the word Oz. What is, the, the Radak said, it was, he was focusing about the mouth. What does it have to do with the mouth of the sucklings and, and the infants that, you know, is a foundation, foundational thing? And the Midrash in Shira Shirim Rabbah is putting an emphasis on the word oz. What does that mean? That, what's the Yisadeta oz? What did you give through little babies? And Shira Shirim is saying, en oz el Torah. That is what is written from the mouth in the inf uh, of the infants and sucklings, you founded strength. And strength, says the Midrash, means only Torah. As it is stated, the Lord will give strength to his people. So they're taking one pasuk, Hashem oz le'amoyten, and they're saying it's clear that what God gave his people is Torah. And if oz in the pasuk, Hashem oz le'amoyten, the Lord will give strength to his people, is Torah, so when we say, you found its strength, it's the same strength. Oz here is Torah. So Oz here is Torah. So something about the babies and the infants that are teaching us Torah. What does that mean? And uh, um, I chose to, to bring you um, an uh, explanation from the book of Rashid Chochmah is, is, a, is a, a mystic called Rabbi Eliyahu Devidash from the 16th century. He was a student of Ramak, Rabbi Moshe Cordovero. And what Rabbi Eliyahu Devidash is saying, it's because the, 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 the Pasuk wants to tell us that don't think that you cannot start to teach Torah to very, very young children, even from their mother's breasts. Because we have to try, Yishtadel Adam Lilmod Bno and Bito, Torah, when they're very little, and then you go gradually from step by step, according to their years, according to their abilities. But don't say, I'll wait till they'll grow up. No, the Torah can already be there at the mouth of little kids, of little children, of infants, and they'll get whatever they'll get, but it, it will help them to grow from there. But he, he continues to say, 
ואף על פי שהם מגלגלים בפסוק מפני שאינם יודעים לקרוא אותן, even though, like sometimes they don't even know how to say the right words because they don't yet know how to read, God loves them. God has a lot of pleasure from listening, can, so to speak, from listening to, little, to infants and little kids, learning Torah. And he doesn't care if they don't say the right words or they, or they get confused. And he quotes that from a pasuk in Shir Hashirim, It means, my, it means I, 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 um, I put him on a, 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 on a pole and say, I love him. And God, God looked at, look at the people of Israel and say, I love them. But the Midrash is saying, Diglo, which also means a flag, a sign. It, if, we, if we change the letters, it can be Dilugo. In other words, he skips. So God is saying, even if the little kid skips words, and skip even a whole understanding, but they are occupied with Torah, God is, ve- God is very happy. And that brings us to the last Midrash that I want to share with you today, which is really an astonishing Midrash and, 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 and um, a very, very um, brave, okay? And, and with a very deep message. And the Midrash, we find this Midrash also in Shir Hashirim Rabbah, but I chose to bring it from Midrash Tanchuma. And the Midrash is saying the following. When God wanted to give Torah to the people of Israel, he told them, would you accept my Torah? And they say, hey, they say yes. So then God told them, okay, I want you to bring me a guarantee that you will keep my Torah. Now, we don't hear about it in the text of the Torah, okay? That's why this is a Midrash. In other words, Chachamim are saying, God wants to know, and, and, and he's asking the people of Israel to bring a guarantee that they will keep the Torah. So go, they go to the most obvious place, and they say, our forefathers, Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, they'll be our guarantees that, uh, um, that we'll keep the Torah. And the response of God is very odd. Amar lahem, don't bring me your forefathers. They themselves are not perfect. They also need to bring guarantee for themselves because, and then the Midrash is, is giving us different um, um, incidents in the, in the Avot's life that they were not perfect. With Abraham who asked, Abraham said, asked God, how do I really know that you, I'm going to inherit the land? And Yitzchak loved Esav, and Esav is not someone that God likes. We hear it not from the Torah, but from Malachi. And Yaakov also, from the words of Yeshayahu, not the words of the, of the Chumash, is like, I don't know where, where, where I go. In other words, God is telling the people of Israel to bring your forefathers and your foremothers, to bring your past people as the guarantees is not good enough. Then the people of Israel say, okay, our children will be our guarantee, our children. And God right away accepted it, accepted that saying, and he gave Torah to the people of Israel. As it says, In other words, um, let's read it. The, at the, the, holy blessed, the Holy One blessed, he immediately accepted them as, uh, as a sur- sureties, and gave the Torah to Israel, as it, it says, out of the mouth of baby and suckling hast thou found strength. Now, we look at this Midrash and we understand something very deep, that God is saying, you know, what happened in the past, let me just make this English so you can look at the, at the English. God is saying, what happened in the past is something that happened and we cannot really fix. The only thing we can fix is the future. And our children are our hope. We know that we are not perfect and we're trying to fix. But when we give birth to, to children and we start raising our children, there is hope that our children will be even better than us. And that God accepts. And we should end with a, with a tefillah that indeed our children will be better than us and guarantee the continuing, continuing of, the, of the Brit of the covenant between the people of Israel and God. Thank you.